To make wheat usable, the outer seed covering and stems or chaff need to be separated from the grain. This was done by throwing the wheat and chaff into the air with a winnowing fork or fan. Because the wheat was heavier, it would fall to the ground, while the lighter chaff was blown away with the wind. A final winnowing was done with a shovel. Once the grain was sent to storage, the threshing floor was purged or cleaned by burning the remaining chaff. John was warning the people that the day would come when the Son of God would use the winnowing fork of judgment to separate the righteous from the wicked. The Lord commanded Israel to take his words and bind them on their hands and between their eyes. The Jewish interpretation was to copy the Lord's word on small scrolls and place the scrolls in leather cases. They wore the cases on their foreheads and arms when they prayed. These leather cases were called phylacteries. The Lord also commanded Israel to put a fringe on the border of their garment as a reminder to keep the commandments. On this fringe they were to put a blue ribbon, the color being symbolic of heaven, to remind them of the source of their commandments. By making their fringes longer and their phylacteries bigger, the Pharisees wanted to show that they were more righteous than others. This show of self-righteousness was condemned by the Lord. On the day of the wedding feast, the bride was assisted by her attendants, while the groom gathered with his friends. The friends went with the groom to get his bride and take her to the wedding feast. With great anticipation, friends and neighbors lined the path to light the way and join in the procession. If the groom delayed his coming, each guest had to have enough oil to last until the groom arrived. At last the cry was heard, here he comes. The attendants excitedly left the bride and went into the street to light the final way for the bridegroom. The word Gethsemane means oil press. In the garden of Gethsemane, olives placed in baskets were pressed down under great weight, causing them to give up their oil. There is a similarity between this and the atonement. In this same garden, the Savior, under the weight of the sins of the world, was pressed down, causing him to shed his precious blood from every pore. This act of selfless love paid for the sins of mankind. In our society, each new day begins at midnight. In the ancient Middle East, the new day began when the sun went down. We still see remnants of that practice by celebrating Christmas Eve, the night before Christmas Day. The night and the day were divided into 12 equal segments called hours. Though the actual time varied depending on the time of the year, sunrise would be somewhere around 6 a.m. Three hours after sunrise was the third hour, about 9 a.m. The ninth hour would be around 3 p.m. The night was divided into four sections called watches. The name watches comes from the three-hour blocks during the night that soldiers stood on guard or on watch. The watches started at sunset and ended at nine, midnight, three, and six. Ancient Israel was waiting for the coming of a Messiah or a Christ. Both of these titles mean anointed one. The words anointed me in Isaiah's prophecy refer to a coming Messiah by saying, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Jesus was telling them he was the promised Messiah. The people in the synagogue thought he was only a carpenter's son and wanted to kill him for blasphemy. A purse was used to hold money and 
came in many different forms, including a pouch in the girdle or a bag that hung from the girdle. A scrip was a travel bag, sometimes called a beggar's bag. It was used to carry food or other personal belongings. Sackcloth was made from the hair of a goat and was very coarse, like burlap. Because it was very uncomfortable when worn near the skin, it symbolized outwardly the deep sorrow and tribulation through which a person was passing. Ashes were sprinkled on their head to show humility. A wide variety of skin disorders were diagnosed as leprosy. Generally, lumps would form and turn red, then form white scales, progressing to open sores. Often the disease would penetrate to the bone, affecting internal organs and joints, often causing limbs to distort. Leprosy was the most feared disease in the Holy Land. When infected, people were required to be examined by the priest. When a priest declared a leper unclean, this meant he was unfit for sacred ordinances and was banned from the community. When healed, the leper could be pronounced clean by the priest and be brought back into society. In the Jewish community, the synagogue, directed by a group of local elders, became the social, educational, and religious center of the community. To be excommunicated, excluded one from the use of the synagogue, which was a major part of their social interaction. Claiming that Jesus had healed their son might have been looked upon by the leaders of the synagogue as blasphemy, an offense worthy of excommunication. To protect the sheep at night, the shepherd would lead his flock into a walled enclosure protected by thorns to prevent wild animals and thieves from climbing over. Sometimes a wild animal driven by hunger would leap over the walls into the midst of the sheep. Such a situation separated the true shepherd, one who loved his sheep, from the hireling who worked only for pay or out of duty. The true shepherd was willing to give his life for the sheep. In the Middle East, the shepherd knows each of his sheep. He goes before them and calls them by name. The sheep know his voice and trust him. They will not follow a stranger. Thus, when the shepherd calls from the gate of the fold, only his sheep will come to him. Feasting at the time of the Savior was done reclining on couches. The most honored guest was seated on the right hand of the host, the second on the left, and others further from the host, depending upon their status. While eating, they would usually lean on their left elbow and eat with their right hand. The person lying in front would be lying in the bosom of the person behind them, because they would be the closest to their chest. Likewise, that person would be lying in or on the bosom of the person behind them, even though they wouldn't actually touch them. It was also a common practice, while the guests ate, for servants to wash the feet of the guests. Even though the local synagogues were presided over by elders, the congregation actively participated in the instruction. After reading the scriptures, the reader would give a commentary on the passage read. At this time, the congregation was free to ask questions and participate in a discussion. Paul took advantage of this opportunity to teach the gospel in synagogues. The schoolmaster referred to in the scriptures was a trusted servant whose main responsibility was to guide a young boy to adulthood. One of his responsibilities was to take the young man to school, where the boy would be formally taught by a teacher. The law of Moses was like a tutor until the Savior came with the higher law. 
The basic clothing for both men and women was the tunic. It was much like a sack with holes cut out for the head and arms. A piece of leather or folded cloth was worn at the waist like a belt and was known as a girdle. When it was time to work, the long tunic would get in the way. They brought the loose ends and tucked them into the girdle, which gave their legs freedom of movement. This was called girding up your loins. In the gospel usage, girding up your loins means to prepare yourself, work hard, and give service in the kingdom.